Welcome to the celebration of Mass for the fifth Sunday in Ordinary Time from Assumption Church in River North, Chicago. The living God, my shepherd is, I know no care or need. You guide me where rich pastures grow along the verdant mead. Where every day by pleasant way my hungering soul to feed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. In today's gospel, Peter cries out to Jesus, depart from me for I am a sinful man. We're all aware of our own sinfulness, and yet we've come to believe that God's mercy is greater still. So let's pause and acknowledge our sins and leave them before God. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, we may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. In the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on a high and lofty throne, with the train of his garment filling the temple. Seraphim were stationed above. They cried one to the other, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. All the earth is filled with his glory. At the sound of that cry, the frame of the door shook, and the house was filled with smoke. Then I said, Woe is me, I am doomed, for I am a man of unclean lips, living among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, holding an ember that he had taken with tongs from the altar. He touched my mouth with it and said, See, now that this has touched your lips, your wickedness is removed your sin purged. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Here I am, I said. Send me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
In the sight of the angels, I will sing your praises, O Lord. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with all my heart, for you have heard the words of my mouth. In the presence of the angels I will sing your praise. I will worship at your holy temple and give thanks to your name. In the sight of the angels I will sing your praises, O Lord. Because of your kindness and your truth, for oh, you have made great above all things your name and your promise. When I called, you answered me. You built up strength within me. In the sight of the angels, I will sing your praises, O Lord. All the kings of the earth shall give thanks to you, O Lord, when they hear the words of your mouth, and they shall sing of the ways of the Lord. Great is the glory of the Lord. In the sight of the angels I will sing your praises, O Lord. Your right hand saves me. The Lord will complete what he has done for me. Your kindness, O Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the work of your hands. In the sight of the angels, I will sing your praises, O Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I am reminding you, brothers and sisters, of the gospel I preached to you, which you indeed received and in which you also stand. Through it, you are also being saved if you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, that he appeared to Cephas then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 brothers at once, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. After that, he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one born abnormally, he appeared to me. For I am the least of the apostles, not fit to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace to me has not been ineffective. Indeed, I have toiled harder than all of them, not I, however, but the grace of God that is with me. Therefore, whether it be I or they, so we preach and so you believed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. While the crowd was pressing in on Jesus and listening to the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret. He saw two boats there alongside the lake. 
the fishermen had disembarked and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, he asked him to put out a short distance from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. After he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into deep water and lower your nets for a catch. Simon said in reply, Master, we have worked hard all night and have caught nothing. But at your command, I will lower the nets. When they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their nets were tearing. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come to help them. They came and filled both boats so that the boats were in danger of sinking. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at the knees of Jesus and said, Depart from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For astonishment at the catch of fish they had made seized him and all those with him, and likewise James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners of Simon. Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men. When they brought their boats to the shore, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There's an old Latin expression, sumus quod sumus. We are what we are. We are who we are. And the question in life is, is who we are good enough? Now, if we were to ask advertisers and the images that they present to us, the answer would be no, we're not good enough. We're not thin enough. We're not attractive enough. We're not rich enough. But we can get to be good enough if we buy what they're selling. We're told that we're not good enough when we're the object of gossip, or we're reminded of our failures, or we're bullied on social media, or we're passed over for promotion, or when people always neglect to say thank you. But if we ask God, are we good enough? Is who we are good enough? God's answer based on our three scriptures today is yes, who you are is good enough. Trust me, it is. So who are we going to trust? If we elect to trust God, then our scriptures tell us that God will lead us, the person that he has created, into a deeper and a richer life. Because all three of our readings today are about a call to discipleship. And in each of them, we can see that that call involves a three-step process. First, some sort of encounter with God, then a recognition of our unworthiness, our sinfulness, and then an invitation to trust God. That we're invited not just to rely on ourselves, but on God. And in the readings, this process plays out in a rather dramatic way because the figures that we read about, Isaiah, Paul, and, and Peter, play such key roles in God's plan for the world. But in a less dramatic way, I think those same three steps unfold in all of us who are disciples of Christ. I wouldn't be standing here before you today if 45 years ago I hadn't felt God saying, trust me. It's as simple and as scary as that. So let's look at these readings in a little more detail. First of all, we have the story of Isaiah's call. Now, what we know about Isaiah is that he was a person of some wealth and, and, and breeding. In other words, he was someone who had uh, career options in life. 
and he was also observant and perhaps a bit routine in his observance at the temple, you know, going in and tossing a few coins and making his offerings. But this particular day, something absolutely awesome and spectacular happens, this multi-sensory experience. You know, some people call it a vision, but, but it's, it's a whole lot more than a vision because it involved sight as well and sound and smell and the whole room is shaking, and, you know, this was long before surround sound, so this had to be really amazing. And he gets to see that the God he'd been routinely worshiping was for real. And all the things that had been said about God in Scripture were for real. And so Isaiah looks at the mediocrity of his own life, and he says, I am a man with unclean lips, living among people with unclean lips. We don't know exactly what he meant by that. Maybe he was a gossip. Maybe he had a potty mouth. We don't really know. But his point was, Lord, you don't want me. I'm not good enough. And God's response is to send an angel and take the sin away. Because God has a plan. I want you to use your big mouth to proclaim my message. I want you to be a prophet. And so God then asked, who shall I send? And Isaiah says, send me. He doesn't even know where he's going to go or what he's going to be asked to do. He doesn't care. He's already discovered a deeper and a richer purpose in life as God's prophet because he chose to trust in God. And then as St. Paul, as he is trying to nudge the Corinthians in our second reading into a deeper commitment to God, he says, I'm not worthy to be called an apostle because he persecuted the followers of Christ. He was pushing in the exact opposite way than what God wanted to happen. And all of a sudden, he's blinded by this light and falls down and he hears this voice saying, why are you persecuting me? And even many of the followers of Christ weren't too comfortable with this Paul guy joining their side because they didn't really trust him. Why would God choose someone who was violently antagonistic toward Christ to spread the good news of Christ? But I think God's answer is, where else would I find someone that, with the same passion and determination and single-mindedness to get the job done than Paul had. I just have to channel all those qualities in a different way. Only Paul could have done what Paul did. Somebody who was more scholarly or more passive wouldn't have had the same impact. By the grace of God, Paul says, I am what I am. He chose to trust in spite of the skeletons in his closet. And then in the gospel, we come to Peter and the other future disciples. And they are business partners in the fishing business. And they've been out all night with their nets trying to catch fish. Night is the proper time for catching fish because they tend to be closer to the surface when the surface water is cooler. And they catch nothing. And now as dawn breaks, they're ready to tie up at the shore and go home and sleep. But here they encounter Jesus, who is preaching at the shore. And as the crowds began to build, uh, Jesus conscripts Peter in his boat and said, let me talk from your boat. So just offshore, Jesus talked. And we can imagine he probably talked a long time. And then it was all over and, and the crowds began to filter away. Jesus says to Peter, go out into the deep water and lower your nets for a catch. Well, now Simon Peter would know that sounded ridiculous. Number one, he was really tired and he really didn't want to listen to anybody's stupid ideas. 
He'd fished in these waters all night and caught nothing. There weren't any fish to be had. And, and, and in the daytime, uh, the heat has come up and the fish are not going to be near the surface where the nets are going to reach them. But something led Simon to trust Jesus, this preacher, this carpenter. Something led Simon to lean not on his own talents, but on Jesus' words. Something that he heard led him to trust Jesus. And so he says, we have worked hard all night and have caught nothing, but at your command, I will lower the nets. And the catch is so enormous that it fills his boat and he has to call his partners out to help. They're overwhelmed by this encounter with the divine. And so Peter, like Isaiah, says, depart from me. I am a sinful man. But Jesus' response is, do not be afraid. From now on, you will be fishers of men. And they left everything and followed him. So what do we learn from the call of Isaiah, the call of Paul, and the call of Peter? Well, I think from these three people, we learn three things. First, we really are unworthy of being called to discipleship. That's the truth. But God calls imperfect people because those are the only people God has to work with, right? Sometimes I think we say, I am a sinner, and it's true, but maybe it would be more accurate to say, I am a person who has sinned, because who we really are is a child of God. And God doesn't want us to wallow in our guilt or our self-loathing or be defined by what we've done in the past. Like Isaiah, we can be made clean. For God, we're good enough to do his work. Who we are is good enough if we trust God. We are who we are, and that's good enough for God. The second thing is that God never calls us to something that we're not equipped to do, that God hasn't already gifted us with whatever we would need to do what God wants us to do. He used Isaiah's big mouth to proclaim his message as a prophet. He used Paul's determination and zeal to spread the gospel. And he would go on to use Peter's skill as a fisherman to draw in people into the kingdom. We don't always see the potential in our gifts, but Jesus awakened a new sense of what our gifts can be used for. God won't ask us to do something for which he hasn't already equipped us. I remember in high school, uh, after watching me playing basketball, a phys ed teacher said, you know, you have the potential to be an excellent spectator. I would not be the person to lead the Bears to their first Super Bowl victory in many decades. Hopefully someone's being called to that, but it's not going to be me, all right? I'm only going to be called for something for which I'm equipped. And thirdly, God's call to discipleship is a call to venture out into deeper waters, to move away from the shore and the shallow water, and to move out where it's a bit deeper and the currents are stronger. Not to be afraid to move in deeper. And what would that mean for us? Well, I suspect the seed of our call has already been planted in our heart, and it's really up to us to respond. It might be a call to become more serious about prayer. You know, maybe we've rattled off our night prayers for years or decades, but now maybe we want to get a little more serious about it, to take Scripture maybe and meditate on it and, and not just talk to God, but listen to God and, 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 and let God invite us into a deeper and more intimate relationship and lead us to become a more understanding and compassionate person. Maybe our call is to some other deeper ministry in our church or our community. 
We're being called maybe to do something that we're not so sure about, that we're not so comfortable, uh, something that involves some risk. And yet we may have an itch to try it. And that's Jesus saying, don't be afraid. Row out a little bit further and give it a try. Or maybe it's some social cause around us in our world. You know, sometimes we, you hear so often, you know, they should do something about that. Somebody should do something about that. You know, the kids are failing or falling behind in school. We've got single mothers who are struggling, elderly people who are lonely. The earth is getting trashed. Prisons need to be reformed. They should do something about it. Maybe they is you. Maybe move from being passive to being active. And when we move from being passive to being active, not everybody may like it or approve of it. The winds sometimes grow stronger as we row out deeper. Or maybe our call is in our own family to take our role as a parent a little bit more seriously. Or maybe is to take our role as son or daughter or grandson or granddaughter more seriously, to pay attention to someone who's in a nursing home. Maybe it's to take a risk in reconciling some dispute in our family with the chance that some new initiative might bring us together. It's a risk, but Jesus would say, do not be afraid. Discipleship, the call of discipleship, is always a call to row out into deeper waters. And we always have the freedom to push Jesus away. Depart from me, I am a sinner. But the invitation is also an opportunity to discover or rediscover our sense of mission. And we're less than a month away now from the beginning of Lent. And it might be worth thinking about, instead of just giving up our usual thing for Lent, maybe take a chance on that whatever it is that's sort of itching within us, that's uh, burning within us, that's sort of wanting to get out. Maybe Lent would be a good time to trust the Lord and push out into deeper waters and see what happens and see if we aren't led to a sense of deeper meaning and purpose in our life and a richer life altogether. And now we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We bring our prayers and petitions before God knowing that they will be heard. For the church, that we may allow Jesus to draw us away from our fears and our shallowness and draw us into the mission that he left us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. For peace, that the Spirit will inspire world leaders to resolve differences and reduce tensions in Eastern Europe, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Our prayer. For catechumens and candidates, that they may welcome the life-giving message of the gospel and grow in their knowledge and love of God, we pray to the Lord. 
Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. For vocations to the priesthood and religious life, that those who are being called will respond willingly and serve generously. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those who carry a great burden of guilt and regret, that they may let out their spirits into the deep sea of God's forgiveness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are ill, that God will heal the sick, lift the burden of those with mental illness, support health care providers, and bring an end to the pandemic. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God, ever faithful, source of all wonder, answer these prayers for the betterment of the world. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Come my way, my truth, my life, such a way as gives us breath, such a truth as ends all strife, such a life as killeth death. Come, my light, my feast, my strength, such a light as shows a feast, such a feast as men's in length, such a strength as makes his guest. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord, our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant, we pray, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his Paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, 
which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, and all the clergy and all who minister to your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At our Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and grant us peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let's share God's gift of peace with the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. We pray an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. By the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright, who will bear my light to them? Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go. Let us pray. O God, you have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice. Grant us, we pray, so to live that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Holy God, we praise thy name. Lord of all, we bow before thee. All on earth thy scepter claim. All in heaven above adore thee. Infinite thy vast domain, everlasting is thy reign. Infinite thy vast domain, everlasting is thy reign.